Welcome to the Hire Yourself Podcast. If you're ready to take control of your destiny, build wealth, and live life on your own terms, this is the place for you. Each week, Nat and I will talk about business, franchising, and personal growth to help make you more successful. Good morning, Nat. Good morning, Pete. Woo! I'm pumped up today. All right, what's going on? Did you did you get your I, exercise in already? Oh boy. Well, I exercise that financial muscle. Okay. <laughs> I, I've come to the realization, or or it's come back to me, that kids are expensive. Oh my gosh! I know. I'm getting ready to send my first one off to college. I'm just starting this journey that you're, <laughs> you're trying to get done with. All right. So you know, I I have four kids, right? And I my my one daughter, uh, she's home. She's graduated from grad school, and she's using one of my cars. So Friday, she calls me and says. I got a flat tire. Oh. I said, okay, call roadside assistance, right? And we, we get the thing repaired. No big deal, right? Four days later, four days later, Tuesday, she calls me and goes, I just hit a pothole and the tire's flat. I oh, go, man. Oh, okay, fine. So I call roadside assistance, put the spare on it, goes to the dealership. And basically, she's blown out the tire. Now, it's an all-wheel drive car. So what that means is if you're replacing one tire, if there, if enough tread is gone, you're replacing all four tires. So I have to replace all four tires. But she was so good at driving through that pothole that she actually broke the tire, the wheel, <laughs> right? Now, I didn't realize how expensive wheel, how, how expensive do you think a wheel is on a Ford Escape? Just, just guess. I'm going to guess a thousand dollars because it's the way you're framing it. It's got to be expensive. Yes. I'm thinking it's four hundred dollars. It was twelve hundred and fifty dollars for the wheel. Oh my and gosh. I, and I called the dealership and I said, This can't be right. The wheel is twelve hundred dollars. You're telling me I have five thousand dollars worth of wheels on that yeah. car? <laughs> And I'm, I, I'm like, this is unbelievable. My daughter's killing me here, right? So I'm like, quit driving the car. You're killing me. So Yeah, brutal. All right. Well, I just, on our last podcast, we talked about that a good, finding a good partner, right? And I talked about being married for a significant period of time and milestone. And with marriage is, is you know, you got to find that right partner um, so that you can go through these things of raising these kids, all this craziness, right? So I thought what we do today is we talk about the 10 things you look for in a franchise partner. So as you're trying to find that right franchise partner, what are the 10 things? Sound good? Perfect. Yeah. All the, right. um, you know, I think when I'm looking at franchises and evaluating franchises, I really want to see what the experience of the leadership team is, what, you know, what their track record is. Um, that's probably where I would start. Uh, yeah, so think? I think that's the first thing, right? When we're looking yeah. to invest in a franchise, find that franchise partner. We got to look at the leadership because they're the ones leading this organization. And I think leadership is different, right? If if I run a small business, that's one thing. If I am running a franchise organization with 100 franchisees, that's a totally different type of leadership. Well, and I can tell you, I've honestly, in the past, I've looked at some franchises and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is never going to work. You know, I didn't really look at the leadership team. <laughs> Come to find out a couple of years later, there's like hundreds and hundreds of locations. Everybody's making money and is happy. So, yeah. I, you know, sometimes the, the concepts can even seem kind of ridiculous. But if you have the right leadership team and they know what they're doing, it can take off. So you yeah. that. I think you do have to, you know, really yeah. heavily weigh the leadership team. Yeah. Right. And you do that through conversations with the leadership team as you're, you know, going through your evaluation. OK, what would be the second uh, thing you would look for in a franchise partner? Uh, to me, like w- when I'm thinking or helping guys kind of get started, you know, it's really like, it's like time to, how much time is it going to take to make that first dollar? So I kind of think of that in terms of like, you know, getting launched, kind of the support and training infrastructure in place um, because time is money. And if you can compress that, like, you know, if it takes you 12 months, 
you know, that's one thing, but just think if you could compress that down to maybe four months and then you're making money and then you, you know, you're eight months ahead of the game of other people that are kind of just, you know, spinning their tires waiting 12 months. So launch support and training would be huge in my mind. Cause yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah. about the reason why we invest in a franchise is for the systems, the processes, procedures, the training, right? So that's one of the reasons why we're willing to pay that franchise fee to pay those royalties is to get that launch support and training. But not all launch support and training is created equal, right? Mm -hmm. Franchisers totally. have different systems and stuff like that. And so as you're evaluating the franchise business, you really have to understand, okay, when I become a franchisee, what, what day one, what happens? How, uh, what's the training that I'm going to receive in what form? And what's the support ongoing? What, what am I going to get uh, as I launch that business? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the third characteristics we're looking at as a franchise partner what what would be the third one you think of i can't think of it like uh validation or you know what are the other franchise owners saying um you know what's been their experience um kind of like the you know basically a net promoter score of the franchise system um that's where that's where i would go after you know after leadership team and launch and support would be the franchise the system happiness yeah, right. So we know that when we evaluate franchises, we do what's called validation, conversations with existing franchisees without the franchisor present. And that's really where the rubber meets road. That's where you find out if franchisees are happier or we're making money, right? And so that is so important to understand, hey, you know, what's going on with these franchisees? Are they happy? Are they making money? Are they satisfied? To your your point, net promoter score. Would they would they endorse, hey, this franchisor is a good business partner for sure. Totally. Yeah, they can validate, you know, the launch support and training, how long it, you know, took them to get up and running and potential pitfalls and, you know, just everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, that's my favorite part of the whole process. When, when I've looked at franchises is talking to actual franchise owners, because you, you get so much, it's just, if you ask the questions the right way, you could get some really good answers. All right. What do you think the fourth characteristic we'd look for uh, in a franchise partner? Um, I always think that like, the image and reputation is important. So, you know, you want to be a part of a system that has a good reputation because, you know, you're it's going to be associating your name on it and your integrity. So you want it to have a good, good um, reputation in the community. You know, a lot of franchises are kind of up and comers or maybe a little bit earlier. Um, so, again, you kind of tie back to the leadership team, see what their track record has been um you know with the other brands it does seem like you know leadership teams that have successfully brought other concepts to the market a lot of times you know the you know that increases the odds of having a good uh, up and coming or early adapter system too yeah and i think you can play around in that that thing called google yeah right and you can kind of google and see how the parent company what kind of reputation and what's their google reviews and stuff like that so you kind of start trying to get a feel for hey what's the image and the reputation of a business it, it just takes a little bit of, of work kind of digging in all right i think of the fifth one is uh the size of the franchise system right I, do they have five franchisees or do they have 500 franchisees yeah and piggybacking on that, also like what the size of the support team at headquarters, because sometimes, you know, some of these franchises will have five locations, but they'll have, you know, they might have 10 or 20 people at headquarters or, you know, it's just, you want to see like what kind of support infrastructure. And then also, like you said, the size or just the, the numbers of franchise owners. Yeah, I think that's a great point because a lot of franchisers hire in advance of needing the people. I think a little bit of Scott Marr, who we had on, uh, that had Koala, right? And yep. he talked about having, they had more uh, people at the headquarters, employees, than they did franchisees. Yep. With this idea is they were hiring ahead to provide that great support. So you're absolutely right. The size of the franchise system in terms of the support, but also the number of franchisees, because you, you could be franchisee number six, or you could be franchisee number 501 at some point. Okay. When I bought, uh, when I bought my um, franchise, my senior care franchise, I was early in. I actually kind of always took pride because, you know, they kind of give you a number. Yeah. <laughs> what was and your number? What was your number? It was uh, 218, but they actually uh, gamed the system a little bit. I think they started at number 200. So I was really like more like number 18 because <laughs> 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 they wanted to seem bigger. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I always took pride of being an early kind of in there early. Right. So I get the bragging rights. 
Yeah, and I think that ties into the next one, and I think you hit it. Is you know, is it is it an upcoming concept? So is it an early adopter one, or is it established? Right? Are you yeah. kind of going to be a groundbreaker and number eighteen in your case, right? Or are you going to be you know number five hundred eighteen? So I think it is. That's important. Yeah, and it's kind of a little bit of a yin and yang, if you will, because you know the earlier you are, the more it increases your odds of being able to get that you know ideal territory. Um, the more established it is, you know, there's, you know, some of the prime prime territories, you know, start to be a little bit harder to get. Um, so yeah. there's just different trade-offs, you know, a lot of times it, the territory doesn't completely matter, but if you have kind of like, oh, I really want to have X, Y, Z territory. I want my uh, backyard, you know, yeah, from that stuff. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's, especially as we talk about hot markets like Dallas, Houston, Austin, you know, stuff like that. Nashville. Denver. Yeah, Nashville. Right. You have to be an early adopter. My famous phrase I like to say is that if you know the name of a franchise concept, you probably already missed it. In some or of those markets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've missed it. You, you, uh, you've absolutely missed it uh, from that standpoint. All right. The next one. What would you think uh, another important characteristic is you're looking at or evaluating franchise partners? I would say kind of thinking back to our last podcast about marriage and all that it's just kind of like the you know the culture or the feel or you know kind of how you like being around the brand um and all that i think would be pretty important you know does it make you feel proud um you enjoy hanging out hanging out or having the logo on your shirt all that good kind of stuff yeah i think it's you know i think a little bit of floor coverings international right they had the that just passion to grow and they it's kind of a rah rah not stand on your desk and and yell, but more just that kind of that the passion. But I think a little bit about when we talk about culture and feel. Some franchises, it feels like you're joining a family, right? right? You know, I think of fish window cleaning, right? And then uh, if you in others, it might be where you feel like you're joining a Fortune thousand company, like uh, we'll think we'll say exponential, right? Totally different feel of the organizations. Neither one is good or bad. It's just, it, what do you want? Do you want to feel like you're joining a family? Do you want to feel like you're joining a big organization? It is really about that culture and that uh, feeling. What do you think I, the next one is? What's the next characteristic? Well, it, just following up on that, I think, you know, every business owner needs to kind of understand, you know, what their strength is, whether it's team building or sales and marketing. So I think, you know, just understanding how the heck you are going to get customers is probably the next thing. You need to understand the marketing model um, and see if you're a good fit for that or see if as the owner, you're going to need to hire somebody to do the marketing. Uh, you know, I think that's probably super important to understand, you know, your role in the business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as we look at a partner, I mean, they're providing the marketing model, how you acquire customers. Now, you actually may have to do whatever it is, but they have a specific model that they use to acquire customers. And so you want to make sure you understand that model. And does that model fit with you? Right. To your point, if do I have to do door to door sales? Do I have to hire a salesperson? Uh, what do I have to do to market this business to acquire customers? Do they use digital marketing, right? Do they do door knocking, Wh whatever it may be? Does the franchisor provide that digital marketing support? Do they do most of it or do you have to do it yourself? I mean, I think right. there's so many things, but you gotta understand the model <laughs> associated with that, uh, the marketing model associated with that business. Yeah. And right behind the marketing model is also like the support model, right? Like what's the support look like? Some franchisors actually have like call centers and they have regional, like, um, region, I don't know if you'd call them regional managers, but kind of like regional developer, like they have boots on the ground in your region. Like an um, ops person. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. A coach. Yeah. Yes. Um, so just trying to understand, you know, what's the support model is. If you're the kind of guy that's, you know, like I, I, I can figure this out. I, I don't, you know, need a lot of hand holding. Um, or if you're somebody that kind of feels more secure having, you know, a regional guy or gal like available, um, I think that's the other thing to look at. And again, it just kind of comes back to the value proposition of the franchise. Are they, you know, what's what are they providing in the partnership um, and then just setting expectations at the beginning so you, you have clear expectations. Yeah. And I think franchising has really evolved because more and more franchises are providing all types of different support. Whether yep. it's helping you with your digital marketing to having that call center you mentioned to having recruiting 
companies that actually help you find your core employees, to handling your back end of your, your business uh, from that standpoint, to uh, acquiring equipment and inventory prior to you needing it. Right? So yeah. there are so many different elements to that. And, and I think we're seeing more and more of franchisors stepping up and providing more support. Now, let's be clear. When you get that support, in many cases, you as a business owner are paying for that. Right. So if you got a call center, you're in most cases paying for that call center, because if you weren't paying the franchisor for the call center, you're hiring somebody to answer the phones. Right. right. Or you're doing it right. So we, we generally have to pay for the support, but we want to understand the support that they provide to us as a partner. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, franchising like the local franchise is mostly, in my opinion, um, sales and marketing. Like you have to get customers and you have to build a team. Right. And even building the team is, you know, sales and marketing. It's talking to people, having them buy into the culture um, of your local franchise. Um, and then a lot of the systems and processes are kind of behind the scenes. And that's, you know, that's yeah. it all kind of works together really well. All right. Well, bring us home with the 10th one. What is the 10th uh, characteristic we're looking for? I would say the financial strength of the franchise company. I mean, you don't see it happen too often, but, you know, it, it has happened where franchise will kind of self implode and run out of capital. Um, so I think you really want to understand the financial strength of the franchise company and make sure that they're there for the long haul. And that's not always easy, right? So right. as you're trying to evaluate it, I think within the FTD, they've, they've got a little bit of financial information for the franchisor. And then your conversations with the franchisor, the leadership team is really understanding what, what, what they're all about and what their financial strength is at some point. Yeah. All right. Because, I mean, there are some franchisors that are bootstrapping, right? And that's right. that's that's just kind of like a startup, right? It can be risky. You can run out of capital from the standpoint. So you want to understand well, who's that, behind it. That kind of ties back into the culture and the feel and some of the other things we talked about earlier. You know, I think as long as you have your expectations set and you know what you're getting into, some guys yeah. love the, the bootstrapping and they're like, cool, you know, the franchisor is actually going to listen to me. Um, I'm going to have some input. Um yeah. You know, so it's just, a, you know, that's what you just need to be eyes wide open and do your, yeah. do the research and understand what you're getting into. Yeah. And that's really the candidate, they, the person looking to vest, you have to, you're looking at that partner. You got to do your due diligence there. Yeah. So when we're trying to find that right partner, so we can have that long successful partnership, as we've talked about before, you know, we want to make sure we, we have the 10 characteristics uh, that we evaluate as we consider a franchisor for a partner. Excellent. We should talk sometime about what would makes a good franchisee or a good franchise owner. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that on our next podcast. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for listening to the hire yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.